Greetings, I'm happy to be here again before you and I'm Cynthia Brooks of Fire and Glory International Ministries. I want to come today about a uh, topic I think is really prevalent for this time, important for the time that we live in, and, and it is the, the, the issue of understanding temptation. When you're tempted, what do you do? And so I want to just kind of start with this scripture, James 1, 13, 13 through 16. It says, let no one say when he is tempted, I am tempted by God, for God cannot be tempted by evil, nor does he himself tempt anyone. But each one is tempted when he is drawn away by his own desires and enticed. And then when desire has conceived, it gives birth to sin. And sin, when it is full grown, brings forth death. Do not be deceived, my brethren, my beloved brethren. I want to talk about this issue of being tempted. We're all tempted. All of us are in a, posi uh, a, a situation, a position that life comes at us fast sometimes and, and we don't always have the opportunity to think uh, when we're blindsided by Satan. You know, he hits us and then we react. But what I want to come before you today to, do, to just remind you and give you a few pointers to slow it down so that you don't end up in a situation that you can't handle. Because for every action, there's a reaction. For every action, there's a consequence. And so I want you to just think before you react. You know, we are, our human beings are, are emotional people. We're, we're very emotional. And, and, and you see today that people are reacting to uh, stress. You know, they're, if they're in a car, you know, we see road rage. And, uh, you know, we see, I, I, I saw a video today where a lady was, uh, uh, was in a crosswalk, was going to cross the street, and some a car pulled up into the crosswalk, and she went in and started trying to fight the, no, she wasn't trying, she fought the driver and kicked the car. And, you know, what is wrong with us? I mean, that's just, that's no sense. It makes no sense for her to, to do that. But she was acting of pure emotion. So I wanted to talk to you, and I know that a lot of times when people get into situations, they say, well, you know, God tempted me. Oh, no, 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 God cannot tempt you because he said he does not, he's not tempted, and he don't tempt anybody. But I want to just help you to walk this walk with, and, and to stay in a safe place in, in society, stay in a safe place in your spiritual walk, and not end up operating off of your emotions because we are called to, to take command or to be masters of our emotions. We know we can say certain things, we know we can do so in certain things, but what will it lead you know, to us? What, where, where will we end up if we just did what we feel like doing? So I wanna just give you some pointers on how to operate in this time and operate, especially we're in a time now where there's, you know, we're just being hit constantly by, by, by one trial after another. By, by one global event after another. But we have to be prepared and ready for whatever goes down during. First thing I want to say is make sure you're not operating out of the herd mentality, H-E-R-D. That means because everybody else is doing it that I'm going to do it. No, nope, bad idea. I don't want you to do that. I want you to think about being uh, as, as wonderful and as, 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 as awesome as you can be under and, and under the uh, auspices of the of the word of God operating always in a place of peace and a place of, of wisdom you know is, is it is it wise to act a certain way if someone come at you a certain way yeah you can go off but is it expedient to do to do so so what I want to do is just bring you some pointers on how to stay holy how to stay righteous and how to stay safe in this season. Because you may be having a bad day, but the next person may have a worse day. And so your reaction can save your life. So so the word says, you know, again, let no man say that he is tempted by God. He's not, because God does not tempt us. And so when we're tempted, we have to we have to think about something. That that temptation starts in the mind. Now we first want to just deal with the situation of when if you feel uh, like you want to to mess up your life, like say have an affair, or, or 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 you want something that's not yours, and you got sticky fingers. Let me just tell you something. When the thought hits your mind, I want you to bring that thought under subjection. 
You cannot react just because your mind, you know, it comes to your mind and you start planning and toying with it. Sin happens because we do not bring that thought on this subjection. We just take a thought and we just play that thought and play that thought and play that thought. And so many people have ended up in trouble because someone has said to them, hey, why don't you uh, send me a picture of you? Uh, you know, some kind of uh, sorted picture. And the person who, you know, may think, well, I, I'm just going to send it to them. Never do that. Never do that. You don't send pictures of yourself anywhere. And be careful about what you put on social media. It never goes away. I want you to think about when sin is conceived, it is conceived in the mind. We think about it, and you know, when, 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 when sin is conceived or we're tempted, Jesus said, pray. And you know, even with the what we call the Lord's Prayer, it says, leave me not into temptation, but deliver me from evil. So you have to ask sometimes, ask, I have to ask God, Lord, help me, help my mind, help me in this place. I feel like I'm, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm in trouble. I may do something that I don't want to do, you know, and, and, and ask God to help you. You know, a lot of times, even with some of these things that happens out here in the street where there is violence, a lot of times someone do something to someone and then they just react. Think about your action. Always think about your action. Don't just react to it. Now, if you have the Holy Spirit, you should have a he should be your restrainer. That he restrains you and just say, okay, you know, that's not good. He makes you think real quick. I can't do this, but this or that or the other can happen. But if you don't have the Holy Spirit, you still can think, you still can restrain yourself from operating out of anger. Anger, anger is the biggest uh, emotion that will get you in more trouble than you want to you want to even believe. And remember, Satan is the author of sin, and sin will take you longer than you, further than you want to go, and and, you, and keep you longer than you want to stay. So you don't want to operate in a place of anger and sin. I want you to think about that. But you know, you, we, the Lord's prayer said, "Deliver me, deliver me from evil." Evil is in our thoughts sometimes. I don't care how holy you are. Every once in a while. Something happens in your life and you think about, you know, I, I, I wish they said it to me one more time. Or if this person do anything else to me, I'm going to react a certain way. You can't. You have to always think about what the consequence would be after you do that. But God said he will always give us a way of escape. So he would give you a way to come out of whatever the enemy is trying to, to, to tempt you. Because that's the enemy that tempts. Remember, he comes to steal to kill and to destroy. He wants to steal your future. He wants to kill your hopes. And he wants to destroy your life. And so you have to think, and if if, if anything is going down the, the pike and it's not right, don't have anything to do with it. Think before you speak. Think before you leap. But think. The second point, we're tempted when we when we are drawn away by our own lusts or our own desires. You know, we let these things play out in our mind. And that's what gets us in trouble instead of crushing it. So you, so with that, you got to think about what is it I like to look at on TV? If it's ungodly, you don't need to look at it. If it's going to cause you to react on it. I don't know why you want to look at it anyway. But you don't want to deal with anything that's ungodly. You, you don't want to be in a place, I, even uh, with, 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 with this, the, these uh, protests and these riots, you know, to sit back and to listen to that. I mean, I, you know, pray, pray about the, pray. Pray about what's going on in the world. But to sit back and listen to everybody's commentary or everybody's thoughts and ideas on what's going on and how they feel about this person or this group or how they feel about the other group, you don't need to have a, a, a steady diet on this thing. Because what you'll find yourself doing is you're going to take one side or the other. And so many people, like you may have, a, you, you may have your own idea of how you feel, but if you just keep listening to other people's opinion or other people's thoughts on what's going on in the world, you are going to be seduced by Satan to come into a place where you don't need to be in. You'll either be angry or you could be fearful. Either one of those are coming from a dark place. So, you know, sometimes you just got to cut the TV off and say, you know what, I'm just not going to eat a steady diet of this stuff because this is bringing me to a place of depression or anger or sadness or grief where I don't want to be. So we have to think about, this is the topic on everybody's 
mouth right now. What's going on in the world? And I, I'm, I'm not downplaying anything. I, I'm not. I, I feel for the family. I feel for this country. I, I feel for our country. I, I've said it before, a house divided against itself cannot stand. We are indeed a house divided. America is called the divided states by other nations. We are house divided. And one of the craziest things I've ever seen, well, what well, the craziest thing, but it's close to it, is, is, is last week when lightning hit a flag, the, the largest flag in America hit that flag and split it in half. Could God have been giving us a message that, that this flag that people love and idolize, piece of cloth, we idolize that flag more than, we honor, more than we honor God. It's a piece of cloth. We're all citizens of America. And I think we all love the country that we're in. But what are we fighting about? It's, we all belong to the same country. But that flag was split in half. And you know why? It all, it's all it was, a prophetic gesture of how this nation is divided. Let's stop being part of, part of the problem. And let's look at solutions moving forward. How do we want to live in this country as one? Tempted by our own lust. Stay in safe places. When you're with the opposite sex, I just want to tell some of you people this. If you got to, if, if some people on their jobs have to be with, with, with uh, uh, op, the opposite sex, stay in a safe place. You might need to meet for a business meeting at, at, at Starbucks or something of that nature. Take somebody with you. Stay safe. Don't place yourself where there's temptation. Because where there's temptation, if you don't, if you don't bring that fella down, you're gonna be in trouble. Because Satan is gonna play it up. Have your own spouse. Deal with your own spouse. Leave these other folks, uh, husbands and wives alone. You don't need to be in that. Anyway, what, what a, what a, what a, 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 a snare you get yourself into when you begin to go outside of the marriage or outside of the bounds of righteousness. You know, avoid avoid these things that causes you to lust. I mean, if it's certain kind of music that you play and, and, and it takes you back to your old days, don't play that kind of music. Or if it's, you know, certain people you're around and, you know, these people are salty characters, you need to just divorce yourself, cut them off from them because they're not going to lead you to righteousness. You know, we can't, if, if we want to see Jesus, you cannot roll with everybody. You cannot roll with everybody. You're going to have to cut some people off so that you can stay righteous before God. And you just have to, I, I want to go with this or two, shopping programs. Now, sometimes people get in the worst debt because they're looking at television, looking at shopping programs. I used to love them. I used to look at them. I mean, you know, I cut it on and, and my goodness, I mean, it, you know, they put they pull up a purse or a shoes or a dress I like. And then before I know it, I've ordered it. And, but you know what? You got to pay that back. So if, if you know, I mean, it's okay to get on there. If you, if you, if you, if you can balance yourself and, and be a person and say, well, and you know what? I, I, I know how not to get myself in trouble. Well, watch what you're doing. I'm trying to give you some tips, some, some uh, um, advice on how to stay out of trouble, how to not be tempted. I couldn't look at a program that was full of purses. I just couldn't do it because one of them will be coming to my address. So I know what would what, what tempt me. And so therefore I stay off of, of these uh, home shopping networks because you know they're, they're, they're tempting for me. It's easy. I don't have to go out and then they show me, you know, what I like and the model bring it out. And I'm like, okay, you know, well, I'm, let me pick up the phone and get that. But I've had to, I had to stop myself. And so you have to look at what is, what is your area of weakness? Stay out of that area. And thus give birth to sin. This is what I'm saying. This is what a problem is. We first start by desire. And then we desire the desire turns to to uh, what tempted temptation, then to desire, and then to sin. And God does not want us to spend our life fighting all the time. Know the areas that you have a weakness is. You know, somebody else can do the same thing you do, and they won't be it, it won't be a sin for them. It won't be a it won't be a problem to them. But for you, if it is a problem to you, stay away from it. You know, I I, uh, I counsel 
uh, a lot of people who, who get themselves into trouble with relationships. And, and one of the things that you have to remember, you know, if, if you got friends, who, who are, you know, you t if you tell your friends something, you got five or six friends, you got a whole a whole uh, group of your friends and everybody's turning against each other, you, you need to back up out of that. You, are, you know, friends, friends should be faithful. You need to know how to pick a friend. Friends who pull you down, they are not friends. Friends who tell all your secrets, they are not your friend. Friends who try to hurt you, they're not your friend. They might be somebody you know. They may be your, your homegirl, your homeboy, but they're not your friend. You don't need to have them. They are there to destroy you. I, I've, I've had friends in my life. I have, I've got a couple of friends that I've had been friends with them for many, many, many years. And they're faithful. And there's some other people who I thought was a friend. And I've had to cut them off because of the trouble that they start in my life. I don't want troublemakers in my life. I, I stay away from areas that, that's not good for me. And so I want to just encourage you in, in this hour to um, look at what you've done. Look at, look at your, your, your relationships. Are they godly? Sometimes, you know, you hook up with, 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 uh, with males or have boyfriends or, or girlfriends um, who are so opposite from who we are. But you have to ask yourself, how can two walk together unless they be in agreement? So if I'm not in total agreement, so I don't want to sit back with a person I call my friend and they're doing things that, that, that are against my conscience, but, but, but for, for the sake of friendship, I'm still going to hold tight with them. No, you have to have the same values that I have. And when we have the same values, I know we're going to walk in the same direction. I just want to encourage you on this. The next thing I want to, I want to um, speak about, you don't need to have these old rendezvous. You know how sometimes they have these, these uh, uh, people have, have uh, get on Facebook and somebody uh, get in your inbox and say things or show you things or send things to you. Block them. Unfollow them. Look, you want to be a vessel of honor. You want to be a vessel that people can look at you and say, that person belongs to, to the Most High God. Satan will tempt you and Satan will tease you. He will tempt you with people that are no good. Let me tell you, he's going to come at you like a, like, like a, like a, like a, a lamb. But behind that lamb, under those clothes, would be a wolf. And you have to know what, what type of person you're dealing with. We got to have wisdom in this in this time. We cannot continue to walk foolishly. I don't care how old you are. I don't care. How, we cannot be. We can't be weak in, in 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 dealing with people. We can't be foolish in dealing with people. We have to be wise. God is calling us to be wise. If these people are not who they say they are, and you find out that they're not, believe what you see. When they show you who they are, believe it. I don't care what they tell you. They say, well, you know, no, I just had a bad day. I'm just acting that way. No, they're not just acting that way. That's who they truly are. And you need to get away from them. You know, a lot of times, you know, we are, we are uh, re uh, uh, relational people. We love relationships. God made us that way. But we have to make sure that the relationships that we're in are godly relationships. Are positive relationships. A good relationship. You got a friend that's, you know, they're on the day and off tomorrow. They're not your friend. And if they are, you don't really want to have that. Why, why would you deal with a person that's always moody? That brings you down. We should be the people of joy. We should be the people of, 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 of happiness. We should bring love and joy to each other. If not, what's the point? Ask God to help you walk in this season that we're going in. You need to ask God to help you. God, I need your help. I need you to help me through these dark days. I need you to help me to walk with, with, with the right people. I need to be around people who, who can hear your voice. I need to be around people that I know have the same value system that I have. And if not, you don't need to be around them. I talk to my, my children 
uh, not about the, not not about who they're with because my kids are raised raised a certain way and so my my children are all parents now they, they their kids are teenagers and I talk to my my children sometimes encourage them in dealing with their teenagers because my my kids are going through you know going through the thing that I used to go through with teenagers and and and, and it is difficult it is difficult raising a teen today I am so glad my kids are grown and out of the house but it's difficult raising kids today because children today teenagers don't seem to know what it means to be faithful i listen to some of the things my grandchildren say and it's frightening on what people do these pranks these, these crazy pranks you know that's 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 not a friend that would now some pranks might be funny but you know these things that they do to try to hurt each other that's not good say out of the way of temptation let me let me tell you there's so many people who want to be uh, married they want they want a husband and men will come at you but you know now they have to you have to figure out let's see do I need to get a detective to see if this person is really married or what you know I mean I got I got to check this person out because they're not going to tell you the truth up, up front lying is so prevalent now everybody lies I mean it's like it's a free fall for lying you don't you don't want to hook up with a liar because what are you going to do with them you can't believe anything they say, whether it's a girlfriend or boyfriend. If they're lying, let them go. My goodness, I, I can't stand it trying to figure out if somebody's telling the truth. Because sin leads to death. And it's not all, you know, it, it, it can lead to a, a, a physical death. But you got to understand, Satan is sly. Satan is sly. He is very cunning. He's very sharp. He's brilliant. But God has given you what you need to be able to to reject all the darts and the wiles of the enemy you have god we have the, we have the, the 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 covering of the lord to pray and as god help us in this season help us through this show me this is what you need discernment ask god for discernment show me the people that's in my life show me god is this person for me and once you've established that great but if you're still trying to figure out where somebody is Try the spirit and see if it is of God. You don't need to hook up with people who don't mean you any good. Satan will mock you. And you know how he mocks you? Through people. Through, try to walk right. Try, try to walk right. Try to walk holy. Try to be a decent person and watch Satan mock you. You know, it's funny how people would, would pick with those who are trying to be righteous. Or, or, or to walk holy before God, to, to love God and to, and to keep his commandments. And, you know, people will mock you because you're living a good, a good life. It's jealousy. It's a straight out jealousy. And you need to know that. And you need to know when to walk away. They're jealous. Do something great. You know, the, the people who really become great in this world, great by by the standards of becoming successful are people who have learned how to just shut the noises off from other people what other people have to say about them they learn how to shut them off you know and know when people are your friends or when people are, are just dealing with you in any kind of way you want you you want to be able to look at this so you know what this is of the devil you should ask god give me discernment god show me who's for me who's not for me you know, and, and you and you have to uh, to think about too when it says sin brings death, is that is that what it does? What 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 sin does? It demolishes our dreams. It demolishes our hope, and sin comes to demolish our future. And so, who's the author of sin? Satan. But we also have to think about what are we allowing in our life? We can, we we're overcomers. We're overcomers. Again, Satan comes to steal your future. Don't let him. Don't let him steal your future. I want I want to turn right now to Genesis 4 7. In Genesis 4 7, it says, This is what God is talking to Cain. Remember, Cain and Abel in the book of Genesis made an offering to the Lord. And, and God accepted Abel's offering, but he didn't accept Cain's offering. And Cain became so angry he wanted to kill his brother. And he did. The first murder in history. And so we look at this thing. The first murder. He came up with this idea of murder. I think I'm going to kill my brother because my brother 
offering was accepted by God. I'm going to erase him. And people have been thinking like that all throughout the years because they did well. It says in Genesis 4, verse 7. Well, let me go to Genesis 4, verse 6. So the Lord said to Cain, why are you angry? And why has your countenance fallen? What's up? What are you angry and upset about? What are you angry and depressed about? And this is what God tells us. And this is so rich. It's so rich because this is the, this is the answer to your question. It says, this is what God said. If you do well, will you not be accepted? So if you, if, if, if you do your best, God will accept it. And if you do not do well, sin lies at the door. And its desire is for you, but you should rule over it. What did God just say? He said, and if you do not do well, in other words, if you don't do your best, or you don't give an acceptable offering to God, or if you don't uh, 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 produce what you can produce, whatever your hands find to do, do it all your might. You just kind of sloppy and haphazard during life and expect people to pat you on the back, but then your friend over there is giving their best, and everybody's, oh, look at them. Now they are valedictorian, but they worked hard all year. You didn't. Or they got a promotion on the job, and you didn't. Because they worked hard. Whatever their hands found to do, they did with all their might. But you didn't do anything. You just kind of, you know, got there late. And when you got there late, did what you want to do when you wanted to do it. So now they get all the accolades and they get uh, the, the promotion they get, and they get the, 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 the raise in their salary. And you didn't. So you're depressed. But God says that sin lies at the door and its desire is for you. But you should rule over it. We have the authority over our emotions and over sin. Satan has nothing on us. You rule over it. You will rule. You know what it means? Rule. I mean, you got the authority over sin. What comes to your mind? Your emotions? Master them. Learn how to master your emotions. Learn how to, when you're angry or somebody, someone makes you angry, Master that thing. Say, I refuse to be angry. And if you can't do it like that, ask God, God, help me. Help me to be in joy. Help me to be in peace. But let me not fail. Let me not succumb to my emotions. But let me succumb to your word. Let me humble myself. See, that's the problem too. Humble yourself under the mighty, uh, the mighty hand of God. God will exalt you then. God will reward you. People will see your good works. And they will deal with you according to how you live. I just want to encourage you today. Don't let yourself be caught up in the snares of life. Don't let yourself be caught up in everybody else's drama. Be your own man. Be your own woman. Move by the dictates of righteousness. And when you see that things are, are, are not going the way you thought they should go, ask God. Talk to God. Lord, you know, this is a growing world, but never give in to your emotions in a negative way. So I just want to encourage you today on that. I want you to be well in your emotions. I want you to be well in your, in your, in your mind and your heart. And I want you to live to the fullest. Because we serve an awesome God. We serve a mighty God. And to that I say, be blessed, exceedingly blessed. Amen.